What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today we're doing another co-part walk around. I'm not going to waste any of your time with BS. We don't have a lot of time today. So we're going to get started with a 2010 Mini Cooper. Is that a water line? This isn't supposed to be a flood. This is supposed to be an accident. Now I know everybody tells me stay away from the Mini Cooper. I don't know. I'm, I'm seriously considering one. I think it looks like it could be a fun car. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we should stay away from it. But as you can see, it took a little bit of damage up here. Headlight is bad. Hood is bad. The bumper is bad. This fender flare here is no good. But other than that, it really doesn't look that bad. Does it? I don't think it does. Let's look around here. Oh, man. They had the window cover to protect it, and somebody came out here and, uh, and cut it. Dang. Dang, son. Nah, she doesn't look too bad at all. Except for right here. A lot of clear coat peel right here in this area. Wonder what that what what the cause of that was. Obviously, that's not from an accident. So let's take a look in here. I don't think this is one I'm honestly very interested in at this point. I I thought I was from the pictures, but now that I'm looking at it, I I don't know, man. You got your little you got your little puck. And then uh, we've got nothing, no gauges, no nothing. She's dead as a doornail. I voted. Amen to that. Everybody needs to vote. Yeah. So many of you always tell me, Randy, stay away from minis, man. Stay away. They're expensive. They're just not worth the money. So I think I'm going to take your advice on this one, and I'm going to walk away. Now, a lot of you going to laugh about this one. This is on my list but I, I don't think i'm really interested in it. It, it it this this would be very difficult to sell today even in perfect running and driving condition it'd be difficult to sell it's a 94 pontiac grand am you guys remember this car right you you remember you remember it's got good prime weld tires on it front and back it's listed as mechanical damage with 81,000 miles on the odometer now to me it looks kind of like a grandma car we got lots of <laughs> That's a little bumps and bruises, but I don't see anything major that stands out. That's like, oh my God, this car is, you know, horrible. Uh, what is all over the interior? Oh, it's, I think those are the baby spiders that were flying around for a while. Yeah, I think those are the baby spiders. Dang. It looks like a lot of them found their way into this car and they didn't find their way out. They baked. They baked in the sun. So it's full of dead, dead bodies. Yeah, those are the spiders. Wow. I mean, this thing is just, the whole car is like this. It's covered in those little dead spiders. Oh, wow. Look, they made a nest down here. There's spider webs everywhere. It's been full of water. I can see the floorboard has a water line. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put the key in it. And it doesn't do anything. It does have 81,000 miles, or so it says. So she's going to need to jump. I'm going to bet this has that quad overhead cam motor under there. Ooh, she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to open. There we go. Oh, yep, she does. Quad OHC. A little bitty battery. Put this hood prop in here. Let's, uh, let's put some power to it and see if we can figure out what the mechanical damage is. Okay, so try as I might, I can't get this one running, although I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I know what's wrong with it. Uh, the starter has gone out. Um, it's not the flywheel. It will crank over, but only for about a second, maybe a second and a half. It'll crank, and then the starter just goes out. Um, you can hear it just whine. It goes from cranking the engine for just like a literally a second and then the starter just gives out and it's like neat neat wing neat neat wing um i think it would probably run with a starter and it's not the flywheel because you can turn the key off and it'll crank every single time once the starters had like two seconds to rest it'll crank every time so it's not a flywheel issue i am certain that this one is going to be a starter issue but i'm also certain that this thing has been full of water it's also been wrecked um, this side has been wrecked for sure. Look at the gaps here. I mean, this is bad. You can fit your whole, you fit your whole hand in there. Uh, the lines are so far off on this fender. It is kind of crazy. The door used to be white. There's white paint on the inside of the door. 
somewhere in here right there you can see this used to be from a white grand am so th th this car <laughs> this car has not seen uh good days i i, I think so with that, we're just going to walk away for, yeah, the car's got me speechless, man. Like, wow. <laughs> we're going to walk away from this, move on to the next one. Next on my list is a 2010 Dodge Caravan. Yeah, I know, not, not overly impressive, right? 205,000 miles on the odometer, too. I don't believe this one is wrecked. I think this is like a CDS dealer services car. Grand Caravan, forgive me, it's a Grand Caravan mismatched tires that tire is completely shot and worn out i didn't see this in the pictures either that's why it's important to come out here and look in person you know to get a better idea of what you're actually getting ready to buy or what you're thinking about buying damage to the a pillar a little bit of rust Whoo! good night <clears throat> okay boy the sniff test on this one is not good not good oh and it runs it runs bad <clears throat> runs real bad <laughs> uh, yeah door tire check engine low tire pressure does the window work it does we'll pop the hood here in just a second I'll put in gear it's got the weird shifter up here. Oh, she she runs bad. Ooh, man. I don't know about this one, guys. <laughs> I don't know about this one. Where's the hood release? I don't see it. Ugh, let's see if we can see if we can locate it. I'm I'm. Truly, I'm not feeling this. There it is. I'm not feeling this one, guys. I'm, I'm not. I mean, it's not just a misfire. Just the way it started sounded horrible. It runs horrible. I could feel motor mounts just bouncing around in there. Well, it's got the good engine, though, man. I'll give it that. I thought this was going to be like the 3.3 .3 or something. It's got the 3.8. That's a good motor as a solid motor even with 200,000 miles on it wouldn't scare me too much I would say it seems like it's running better but I, I don't think so maybe it is but I can tell you this it's got factory spark plug wires it's got the factory coil the factory plug wires so chances are this thing is running on factory spark plugs unbelievable the transmission dipstick is missing. It's supposed to be right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's gone. And that right there calls it a day for me. Done. It's a Copart dealer services car. You can see that right there. The running rough, a little nerve wracking, but oh, well, well, well. What do we got here? lots of moisture yeah okay so missing dipstick excessive moisture coming out of the exhaust running rough 200,000 miles and it's a dodge i think you guys know what this means hey it's actually running well yeah it's not running rough anymore ah no don't do it to me Yeah, it's not running rough. Runs fine now. Definitely needs a motor mount. I can't do it, guys. Man, it, it runs, it actually runs pretty good now. No. Walk away, Randy. My first instinct when I fired it up was no, sir, walk away. And as soon as I saw it has no transmission dipstick anymore, plus the mismatched tires and everything. Nah, moisture coming out of the exhaust. We're not doing it, walking away. So this right here is a perfect example of why you have got to come out here and look at these for yourself. Okay, looking at this, you'd think this is an insurance car, right? It's got front end collision damage right here. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's definitely got front end collision damage here, collision damage here. 
Okay, so obviously the car is in an accident. You're thinking, this is not bad. It's a 2010 328i, right? It's a good car, good motor. It's got the, it's got a good uh, good interior too, man. Look at this. Beautiful interior. It's got that, I don't know what color you call this. Someone comment below, tell me what color this is. Beautiful interior, no bags blown. 127,000 miles. Not bad. It does have hail damage, which you can't see in the pictures, but it's got significant significant hail damage all over it. I didn't see that in the pictures. So this is on my list because I was like, okay, this looks like an easy fix. Look at that hail damage. Whew. Yeah, she's rough. To me, it looked like an easy fix. It's like, okay, it needs a hood. It needs a fender. It needs the bumper support. It needs, uh, you know, the lights, grills, all, all the normal stuff. You pop the hood. It's listed as a no run. And you figure, well, it was in an accident. You know, it probably popped something, a fuse or something. Um, yeah, no, no, this is a basket case, man. It's missing the, somebody used this as a parts car. That's what they did. The condenser is gone. Lots of parts are gone. The uh, radiator hoses are all gone. Your oil cooler is just left exposed here. The, the belt's popping off. The, uh, I assume that's power steering is missing. The lid, all the wiring is exposed over here. You've got hoses just laying everywhere. Wires disconnected. No, this was somebody's parts car. And because I didn't look close enough, I didn't realize it's a CDS car. It's a dealer car. So a dealer used what they wanted off of it. Now they're just dumping it, getting rid of it. Nothing wrong with it. Plenty of good parts on it. It's just one of those things you get in a rush into getting into these auctions and buying something. You can miss important details like that. You can end up bidding on something that is not what you thought it was at all. Could this car be put, that, put back together? Yeah. Yeah, it, it could be put back together. But because it was used as parts... Um, I don't think I would. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I would even attempt to put it back together because there's just too much of a question about whether it actually runs or not. And I, I don't think it will. I think this thing has some other problems, and that's why it ended up being, uh, being used for parts. So other than... <coughs> excuse me. Damn, that cough finally came back to bite me in the rear. Other than that, I wanted to share that little bit of information with you guys because it's important to, to make sure you know what you're looking at at the auction. Now we're going to move on to the next one. Next on my list, a 2003 Ford Expedition. Hmm. This is going to be that three valve that everybody wants to stay away from, isn't it? 216,000. Hey, look. Okay, I know everybody hates the three valve. Me included. I don't care for it either. Um, cam phaser issues. Spark plug issues. I can't pop the hood. Um, there we go. But I'm going to tell you this, if it made it to 220,000 miles, I'm not as scared of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like if it made it to 220,000 miles, I think somebody at some point probably ended up fixing it. We've got the backup sensors. Boy, wouldn't it be great if this was the V10? It's not, but wouldn't it be great? It's going to have the 5.4 in it. See, we got, uh, we got Michelin tires all the way around. They're pretty dry rotted. It makes me think this thing has been sitting for a long time. I like it. My 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 thing with Copart dealer services. Oh, it's a four point six. Really, the four point six in an expedition. I didn't know they put those in here. I thought these came with a five four, the V ten. Okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. Four six, good motor, good motor. Although occasionally they still have problems with the spark plugs breaking off in the heads. Uh, not nearly as bad as the five four three valve. This is a good motor. It's listed as a run and drive. Let's find out the interior is in really good condition. Headliner looks like it's got a DVD player back there. Oh, it's cozy. It's comfortable. It's missing the stereo. Somebody probably had an aftermarket system in there and they took it out. At least they didn't break the car to get it out. You know what I mean? Dead as a door nail. Okay. Let's get a jump. Fire this bad boy up. So moment of truth, will it run? Oh yes, it will. And run well it does. Run well it does. Yeah, honestly, not bad. Good oil pressure. Battery voltage looks good. It's got zero gas. Does the important window work? It sure does. And most importantly, air conditioning. I heard the compressor kick on, so I'm pretty certain the AC is going to work as well. Let's see. 
Yes, nice and cold. Nice and cold, we'll shut that off. And uh, let's put it in gear. Backup sensors work. Does it go forward? It does. Brakes are good. Backward. Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see what the engine looks like. Yeah, it actually runs really, really well. This is kind of amazing. It's quiet. I'm still blown away that there's a 4.6 in it. The coolant, I don't know how well you can see that, but the coolant looks brand new. I mean, this thing looks like someone took really, really good care of it. I'd like to find the transmission dipstick. There she is. Just to get an idea of how that looks. Uh, not bad. That's actually pretty good. Okay, so this one, I would almost bet, is going to have no issues. No real issues, anyway. I'm not going to say no issues. Not with 200,000 miles on the odometer. But, uh, this one would probably be alright. My biggest concern is the, uh, the tires being dry rotted. I mean, obviously it's going to need a set of tires, but more than that makes me wonder like why are these tires rotten has it been sitting for years uh i don't know man the rotors are not covered those of you that know me you know that i look at the rotors i don't know how well i can get that on camera but uh the rotors are not exceptionally covered in rust there there doesn't have heavy rust on them like it hasn't been driven for years I just can't understand why the tires would be so rotten. Yeah, it's been driven because the rotors are still fairly shiny and the tires are from the uh, 10th month of 2011. Yeah, eight years. The exhaust pipe is clean. It's not skipping a beat. I don't know if I can open this without hitting this pole. No, I can't. Take a look in there. Something just fell out when I closed the door. That's okay. That's okay. Let's take a look at the back seats here. Very clean. Very, very clean. Third row. Headliner looks good. Let's open this and see what we got. Audio Vox. You think it works? I don't know. Let's turn the power on. I don't think it works. Well, you can't have everything, man. You'd just be doing too much if you got everything. TV, picture select. Nah, power button either doesn't work or the display most likely is just dead on it. Oh, well. It's got the sunroof and everything. Like, this thing is loaded to the gills, man. shut it off see if it'll fire back up on its own or if the battery is completely drained in it you got all your little remote controls and stuff right there all right let's see i think it's going to be dead yep dead well other than the rotten tires concerning me the, the rotten tires really do have me thinking maybe this thing sat for a long time maybe there's something wrong with it could have a bad transmission i don't know the fluid looked good to me a little nervous about this one we'll keep an eye on it see what it goes for and until then you guys comment below and tell me what you think of the ford expedition next on my list a 2000 subaru legacy outback this is this is interesting i don't think i'm interested in this one <laughs> to be quite honest with you it says no park and no brakes yeah that that could be a problem 106,975 miles, which really, that's not a lot of miles. Um, the body is banged up pretty good everywhere. Like, everywhere. There, There's not a single panel on this car that's straight. This doesn't open. It's got one of those little tiny tow hitches down there. Uh, stay three feet from bicycles. Okay, it's got good Firestone tires. At least on the back, the tires look almost new. 
Yeah, the front's got decent Firestone tires as well. Let's uh, see if we can pop the hood on this bad boy. Oh, man, it's a heavy hood. All right, there's your uh, there's your little Subi engine and your little bitty battery. No park and no brakes. That's that's kind of crazy. So it doesn't go into park and it has no brakes. And it's an Oklahoma car, so it shouldn't be rusty. It's got power. Fires right up. Ah, they use the, it. Does have brakes? I can feel the brakes. The brakes feel solid. And it's in park. The e-brake definitely works. So yeah, the e-brake works. And so do the brakes. The brakes are fine. Look. See? Backward. And now we'll go forward. There, see? The brakes are fine. What is that? What was that? Sounds like a drive shaft or... Ah. I know what the problem is. It does have park. It does have brakes. The front drive shaft has broken. Most likely a U-joint or something for the front drive shaft has uh, has snapped. So what you're hearing, that metal noise, is the that's actually the front drive shaft rattling around under there. I was wondering if we could even get under there and see it, but I can't. I can't get you guys a good vantage point from here. Okay, so it's it's mechanical. We know that. We know what it is which is a good thing. The brakes work fine. The e-brake works and park works as well. It's just, uh, you've got a broken drive shaft under there, man. Hopefully it didn't damage anything else. I'm not interested in this one. I'm going to walk away. Okay. Next on the list, monkey wrench, Mike, you overpaid for your one series, my friend, because I found a pristine one series 2011 BMW. Okay. It's not the one series everybody wants. Like, what, what, what is it? The 125 or something like that? Let's see. The top looks pretty good. 76,000 miles, Monkey Wrench Mike. What is it? A one, it's a 135. Sorry. It's a 135i. I could have swore this was like a 128 or something. Okay, I was wrong. I don't know my BMWs. What is all over this? Slugs. Slugs were crawling all over that. I just wipe my hands all on it okay it's a copart dealer services car tires look not good tires are not good man what could be wrong with it now it says it's locked so i'm guessing somebody locked the damn keys in the car at least copart knows about it oh no 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 they didn't no they didn't somebody took care of it this has a buy it now guys oh man i like this Monkey wrench, Mike. You paid too much. You're gonna die when I tell you what the bite now is on this one. You're gonna, you're gonna be like, I paid too much. I paid too much. And this is not even a salvage title. It's a clean title. She's ready to go. Well, what the hell kind of cup holder is that? That is, that is weird. So she's dead as a doornail, Ugh, which means we gotta get a jump on this one too see what it looks like under the hood here here we go clean actually it's it's fairly clean yes sir this does not look bad at all let's take a look at the coolant Full of coolant. You gotta love that BMW technology right there, right? <laughs> yeah, we got coolant. Okay. Good deal. This is nice. I actually like this. You guys are gonna absolutely... We're gonna wait till we start it up here at run and everything first. And then I'm gonna tell you how much this car is. Because honestly, I think you guys are gonna die when I tell you. Okay, so she runs. I can hear a bearing down here going out it's probably just an idler or the tincture also you can see we're leaking oil around this uh 
oil filter housing cap. That's normal. It probably just needs to be cleaned up and have a new uh, gasket put on there. Hopefully, that's what it is. It sounds like it's running okay. Doesn't sound like it's misfiring. Oh, wait till you hear what the bite now is on this. This is going to be hard to walk away from, guys. Uh, morning lights. See, 76,000 miles. We have an airbag light. Fault in the passenger restraint system affecting airbag belt tensioner or belt force limiter. Continue to wear the safety belt. Have the system checked by the nearest service center. Interesting. Okay, so... Apparently, one of these seat belts has failed, or the, the pretensioner has failed. Let's put it in gear. Ooh, that, that, that doesn't sound good. Someone's rattling. Okay, it goes forward. It goes backward, but I heard something rattling. Eh. I don't know, man. I don't know. I would love to try this top out, except I don't know how to work it. Hmm. I drive. Where's the OK button? It says just push OK. It's not listening. It's not listening. I don't think the iDrive works. Isn't this supposed to work this screen right here? Because it is not doing anything at all. This isn't a touch screen, is it? Nope. Okay, so the iDrive apparently doesn't work. Yeah, this does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. Someone left the lights on. That's why it was dead. The lights were actually uh, turned with the parking lights on. So that may have been intentional. I don't know where the, uh, I don't know how to work this roof, guys. I was hoping there would be like a simple button somewhere. Maybe I'm just not seeing it. But uh, I definitely would like to know if the top works. I'm, I'm truly interested in this. This isn't, this isn't one I'm just screwing around with. Um, could it be in the glove box? No. Okay, does the window work? Yep. Does that window work? Yep. Man, I like the car. But that noise... Oh, there's the buttons for the top right there. Okay, you guys want to try it? You want to try the top? Um, what? <laughs> it, it's like it's just straight up saying no. Oh, now it doesn't do anything. Are you kidding me? This is BMW quality? You're joking. 76,000 miles and it's like nothing works on this thing. And in this button, the iDrive isn't working at all. The top. Do I have to hold it? There's a picture of the top there. Okay, we've got a picture of the convertible top on the screen. And it does nothing. So hold it. And then the top appears. Like it's going to do something. Trunk partition error. Let's come back. So we got the paint, we got the paint partition error, the trunk partition error. I came back here to open the trunk and I felt it was really rough under here and I was like, whoa, what is that? Well, that's because it's all been repainted. All of it, there's tape right here. Look at the paint lines. I mean, this is, this is rough. The paint's better here, but I mean, it is so rough under here. I also noticed there were paint lines on the top itself right here. So this car apparently was in a rear end collision. Um, the top says it's not working because of a partition problem. Honestly, I think there's some pieces missing back here, guys. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> there's water in the trunk. There's a tad bit of water back here. So that could be a problem. Um, as far as the whole partition, I don't know if there's, there, there's obviously something missing. Maybe something's supposed to come down, but not this. This has got clips in it. So there's got to be something under here. Oh, like this. There we go. 
Okay, so this just folds down, I guess. That's it. We'll try it. I don't know. The fact that it's been rear-ended leaves me a little concerned. <clears throat> All the windows went down, so they work. Let's try it again. Trunk partition. It's not going to work. Okay. Push that button and all the windows go up. Or, well, okay, except for that one. Now, are you guys ready for the buy it now price? I think it's gonna start back up. Nope, dead as a doornail. And the key won't come out of the ignition. Okay, that's it. The buy it now price on this. You could steal this car right now for a measly $5,500 buy it now. $5,500 buy it now. Mike, you thought you got a good deal for $800? Bro, you could have got this for $5,500, man. Yeah, that's not going to happen, especially now that I came out here and looked at it. Nope, nope, nope. Here we have an 05 WRX STI, guys. And you're going to die. My fiance walked by and she said, oh my god, this car is a piece of junk. These are crap cars, Randy. Oh, you see the look on her face right now because she knows I just busted her out in front of everybody. You are going to get it. You're going to get it for saying that. <laughs> okay. It, it, it's, it's a little damaged. So far, it doesn't look too bad, though. Okay, the front wheels turn slightly to the left. We'll keep it on that. This rear tire is bent up, so we got some problems back there. Clear coat peel, whatever. That's the least of this car's problems right now. This tire looks like it, it may be straight and okay. This window is broken, completely shattered, because I see glass everywhere. Okay, so that window's shattered, and... This wheel is also turned slightly to the left. Good deal. Let's take a look at this junk crap. Oh, what the hell happened to you? This must be a non-runner. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's a non-runner. I didn't see that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there ain't no reason to even try to crank this over. Although it looks like someone did. It looks like someone tried to crank it over because there are like nuts and shells uh, stuck between <laughs> the belt and the uh, the crank pulley. I would almost bet this thing probably had a, uh, a a broken timing belt, and they just started pulling parts off of it. Looks like the radiator is gone. The belt for the AC. So I'm assuming the AC locked up. No, AC is not locked up. I can hear the bearings though. Okay, let's uh, let's let's check some fluids. I don't think that's where it goes. Up, up, up. Here it is, right over here. Up, up, up. Up, 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 up. There you go. Down. There we go. Uh, thank you, Tim. I mean, Jessica. Oh, <laughs> I thought she was gonna hit me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Tim, Jessica. So easy to confuse the two. Don't mess with me while I'm working. It's got no oil. Okay. Yeah. She's... Whatever happened to her... Oh, wow. Watch out. It'll slice your foot open. I can't get into it either. They've got all the doors closed. So I guess the only thing we can do is look through this window over here. It's got like a... It's got a roll bar and everything in it. Oh, it's got custom seats too. I think those are custom seats. Maybe not. They say STI on them. It's got the key. Oh, man. What do we got going on back here? We, we can open this door, right? Yeah, we can open this door. What the hell? Dang. That is no joke, man. Yeah. Th this car has seen better days. I think, I think in this car's case, Jessica's right. I do. I, th I think this one, this one in particular is, is junk. That's why she's got all her pieces missing and full of a rat's nest. Obviously, something was, uh, something was really wrong with it. You don't let a car like this just sit like that, man. You just don't do it. Moving on to the next one. And last on the list for today is an 05 Chevy 3500 Dirty Max Diesel. 
why is this here? It doesn't have any markings on it. It doesn't say if it runs and drives. It doesn't say what the mileage is. It doesn't say anything. Boy, this uh, diamond plate, boy, it has seen better days, man. It, this is just completely rusted out. Check engine oil, but that doesn't go to anything. There's no fuel tank under there. Okay. Wow. This is this is a very interesting bed. I'm assuming it had like fifth wheel rails or something that were over there at one point. Rusted out cab corner right here. You've got rusted, uh, I forget what that's called. Not a kick panel, but it's got like Ranchero shocks on it. I can't believe I can't remember what this bottom piece is called here. Um, not the running board either. You know what I'm talking about. This piece right here. Like, is that the rocker panel? I think it's called a rocker panel. There we go. These running boards solid. Yeah, yeah. So she's not totally rusted out. Oh, and everything comes on. Wait for the glow plug light to go out here. We'll see if it'll fire up. There it goes. That didn't sound healthy at all, did it? Try, try, let's go put a boost on it. Well, with a little help from a little booster pack, she fired right up, no hesitation, no issue at all. So I'm gonna assume probably needs a set of batteries. Sounds healthy, doesn't it? It really does, to me anyway, it sounds good. It sounds real good. And she sounds very, very healthy. Now, if I could find the transmission dipstick, which I think is over there it is, I'd like to have a look, just get, a, get an idea of what the trans fluid looks like here. That's very clean. That's very clean transmission fluid. So that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. <laughs> I'm always a little sketched out by clean transmission fluid. It makes me wonder if, uh, having some transmission problems i'm certain I, well no i'm not certain i could be wrong i think this has the allison transmission in it doesn't it duramaxpower.com oh this is on a tune guys uh-oh yeah although the the knob doesn't seem to work very well but it's 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 on a tune The engine sounds healthy. That's ooh, the brakes are the brakes are rough. I'm gonna put the e-brake on here. Low coolant. Oh. I don't know that it even went into gear. Oh man, it sounds like it did. <clears throat> yeah okay so in drive it does pull forward let's put it in reverse no no reverse uh-uh i can hear it going to drive and it will go forward but it will not go in reverse okay so apparently this has a transmission issue low coolant no reverse I don't know guys, what do you think? Let's try to fire it up one more time, just see what it sounds like. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, it'll run. I'm curious, once you clear out the coolant, how many miles is on it though? Change the fuel filter, service the airbag. 724 engine hours, 364,000 miles on the odometer, wow, wow. Guys, as much as I do like this truck, I don't think I can do this one, man. So that is going to conclude this Copart walk around. Big shout out to my fiance for coming out here and helping out today. I really do appreciate Tim. I mean, Je Jessica. So sorry, man. <laughs> for coming out here. It is windy. It's dusty. And, and it's honestly cold today, man. Comment below 
Tell me out of all the cars you saw today, if there's any of them you would pick, comment those cars down below. And stay tuned because hopefully we pick up something this week from the auction. Maybe a couple somethings, but maybe at least something from the auction this week to, uh, to convince me to get rid of that Mercedes that broke down and left me stranded. I'm so tired of that car. So sick of that car. I'm ready to just let that thing go for like 800 bucks. Someone can come get it and figure out what's wrong with it for themselves. Thank you to Copart. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Auto Auction Rebuilds. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and the bell icon. I truly appreciate all of you for being here. Stay tuned for the next one. I'll catch you all very, very soon.